Okay, guys, it's uh, good to talk to you all again. Uh, today we're uh, still talking about fractions, uh, and uh, we're talking about fractions on a number line. So um, let's go ahead and look at our lesson objective for the day. And our lesson objective for today is 3.7a, and it's represent fractions of halves, fourths, and eighths as a distance from zero on a number line. And uh, what you want to be able to do by the end of the, end of the lesson is I can use a number line to show fractions, and I, I can read a customary ruler, because uh, I think this is probably one of the more practical things that we are going to be teaching you this year. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, look at this video. We've got a video about uh, how to read a ruler. So get ready and watch it. I'd like to talk about using a ruler that measures in inches. Rulers are used in construction around your house. And a lot of times when you look at a ruler, it's hard to figure out what each of the small marks represent. First, let's begin with the largest numbers that have a one, two, three, or four by them. They measure inches. So if it goes to the number two, you know that it is two inches in length. The next largest mark measures in one half inches. But how did we get this? If you count, you will notice that it is divided into two sections. And if it goes to the half inch mark, you only have one of these, so it is one over two or one half an inch. This next mark is called a one fourth mark because if you count, you ha it divides it into four sections. One, two, three, four. And finally, the smallest mark on this ruler divides it into one eighth. Again, you can count and it divides it into eight equal parts. Now let's put this into practice. What is this first measurement? Notice it is going past the one mark and stops at the one half. So it is one and a half inches. This next one touches the fifth mark of the one eighth so it is one and five eighths. And finally, this one touches the two and one eighth because it touches the first one eighth mark. So there we go. How to read a ruler that measures in inches. Thanks for watching and Moomoo Math uploads a new math and science video every day. Please subscribe and share. Okay, guys, I uh, got some uh, snips uh, I took of uh, pictures of rulers, and now we're going to talk about them a little bit. Uh, this uh, first ruler over here uh, is uh, broken down into fourths of an inch, and uh, would have been uh, this probably would have been similar to a ruler you would have used last year. And uh, last year you would have been expected to measure things to the nearest half inch, so uh, you would have probably used a ruler that looks similar to this right here. Uh, this ruler uh, over here in the center, the wooden. Uh, or the center ruler right here. Uh, you can see I got a snip of it, and uh, that first long mark right there is uh, two inches. I'm gonna abbreviate inches, inches. So this mark right here is two inches, and this next long mark is three inches. I'll abbreviate inches. And the next longest mark that's halfway in between those two marks, that's gonna represent a half of an inch. And that would actual mark would actually represent this mark right here would re represent two and a half inches. So two and a half inches, which is a mixed uh, mixed number. It's a mixture of a whole number and a fraction. Um, my next longest marks, I got two marks that are almost as long as the, the, the half mark, and those are quarter inch marks. My first one is one fourth. And the next one over here on the right of the half represents three-fourths. Okay, and then we got the smallest marks that are in between. Those are my eighth-inch marks. So my first one is going to be one-eighth. Okay, and my first fourth is actually two-eighths. My next short mark would be three-eighths. My halfway mark would be four-eighths. My next mark after half is five-eighths. And then uh, my three-fourths is going to be six-eighths. And uh, my next quarter, my next eighth-inch mark is going to be seven-eighths. So this dot right here on my number line, if I want to uh, 
If I was measuring something that came to that point right there, I would say that it is two and seven eighths inches long. And I abbreviate inches with uh, two little hash marks right there. And you can see down here below, um, I took that same, uh, that same ruler above there, and I kind of made it into a strip diagram, sort of like we uh, talked about on, uh, on Tuesday this week. Uh, and I basically just drew lines and made strips out of it. And uh, so each one of these represents one eighth. And there's eight of them all together, which makes the whole. Uh, the next longer marks represents fourths. And I have four fourths there, represents a whole. My longest ones represents halves. And there's two halves and a whole. And this uh, entire one represents a whole. Uh, in this case, it represents a whole inch. And I'm going to show you one more ruler. Uh, and this is probably a more common type ruler. Uh, this is type ruler that I use quite a bit. And it's uh, broken down by sixteenths. And it's very similar to my uh, to the ruler that we're using that's broken into eighths, but it's just a little bit more precise. And it's probably the, the one that, uh, like your parents have, if your dad has a tape measure or something like that, he probably has uh, measurements that look sort of like this. So um, still the long one that's halfway in between represents a half. My next longest is going to be one-fourth and three-fourths. The next longest one right here is one-eighth three-eighths, five-eighths, and seven-eighths. And the ones in between those are all, all going to be sixteenths. Uh, I would just, and I'm, I'm not going to mark on my sixteenths, but uh, if you know something on the ruler, okay, whenever we use a ruler, uh, we use uh, the fraction, and we call it sim the, in the simplest form, or simplified fractions or reduced fractions. And if you notice, uh, all my marks on my, uh, all my fractions that I have on my ruler, if you notice, uh, the numerators are, are all odd numbers. So 1, 1, 3, 1, 5, 3, and 7. And all my denominators are even numbers. So 8, 4, 8, 2, 8, 4, 8. And if I was doing these uh, ones in the middle, those all be sixteenths. Uh, that's going to be 1 sixteenths, 3 sixteenths, 5 sixteenths, and so on. Uh, all the way till I get all the way over to 15 sixteenths and 16 sixteenths, which is one one whole. But uh, that's just kind of a, a reference. Uh, that's the type of rulers that, uh, like I said, uh, adults probably use a little bit more often. And like I said, this is probably one of the more practical uh, things that we're going to learn this year because it's something that uh, I use on a pre pretty regular basis because I like to uh, I like to build things. So I, uh, I'm pretty familiar with how to use a ruler. So uh, I kind of drew a, a section of a, of a ruler right there that's broken into eights, and I kind of use the same format that I did uh, when, we were, uh, when we were doing our number line. So a ruler is basically just a number line. Uh, so this ruler section I'm going to do right here is going to represent starting at zero. So I'm going to put a zero right here, and that's going to be one inch right over here. So halfway in between, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the ruler measurements on top, and then I'm going to put the, the corresponding the, uh, the equivalent fractions below it. So I have one half right here, just like we did up on our uh, first ruler right there. And my longest line that's halfway in between my holes is one half. And then I have it's broken in a fourth. So I have one fourth. And my next fourth is right here that is two fourths that lines up with a half. And I'm going to put that down below here. Uh, my next fourth over here is three fourths. And then uh, my one hole right here is four fourths, but I don't mark four fourths uh, on my uh, on my ruler. And then I'm going to go back and do my eighths. So uh, the first one is one eighth. My next one is one fourth or two eighths. Then I have three eighths. My halfway in between is four eighths. And then I have five eighths. And then three fourths is equivalent to six eighths. Then I have seven eighths, and that's all of my eighths. 
So that's kind of how to draw a ruler. And if you notice what I did is that, like I said, I use the same format we did for drawing our number lines, for doing our strip diagrams. Uh, I used uh, 24 lines from here to here, or 24 grids from here to here. Halfway would be 12, and then uh, each, uh, each um, fourth is uh, six. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and that got me to my first fourth and six to half, six to three fourths and six to a whole. And then my eights is uh, three, because three times eight is uh, 24. So that's one, two, three. That's my first eighth, one, two, three. My second eighth, one, two, three. Third eighth, one, two, three, fourth eighth. And there's uh, gonna be uh, four more sets of uh, three all the way over to, to one whole. So uh, this is just kind of a little example or a little teach on how to uh, read a ruler and uh, how to read a number line. Okay, uh, you see we got a, a ruler right here. Uh, it's a star math chart. Uh, if you ever want to get a copy of that, you could always go to the Texas Education Agency website or TEA uh, website, and uh, you can get a lot of different star materials. This is one of the things they allow you all to use uh, when you take the star test. So we practice with it in class. So um, you can see right there, it's a ruler. On this, uh, what we're gonna use on this uh, star chart today is uh, the ruler, the customary ruler that measures inches. And you can see it goes all the way from zero to eight inches right there. And we're gonna take a minute and uh, measure this pencil using the ruler. So it's important when you're measuring uh, that uh, you don't just place the uh, pencil anywhere. You gotta line it up with the uh, zero. So I'm gonna put the tip of it right there on the zero. And when I look at it now, I can, I can see that it's between the two inch and three inch mark. And um, so it's gonna be somewhere, it's gonna be two inches um, and so, so many, uh, a fraction of an inch long. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and say it's gonna be two inches long. So I'll put the two right there because it's between the two and the three. I know halfway, the longest mark right there would represent two and a half inches. So I'll put my half right there. And my next longest mark that's between the half and the whole is going to be my quarter inch mark. My first quarter is over here on the left side, that's one fourth. And uh, this quarter over here is three fourths. So it looks like the racer is ending right there at the three fourths mark. So my pencil would be two and three fourths inches long. And I abbreviate inches I in usually. Uh, there's also the, uh, the, these two hash marks you can put behind it, which also means an inch. But in third grade, typically we put I in. Uh, with a dot to represent an inch. Okay, so let's see if we can zoom in on this. Uh, you can see I, uh, over there on the far right side of it, I, um, it's not gonna take me to it again. I, I basically took and uh, made my, uh, my ruler into a strip diagram right there, so we can kinda, maybe you can understand the, uh, the measurements a little bit better there. Let's see, a little bit closer, there we go. So, uh, you can see between the seven and eight, uh, that, um, that strip right there would represent the hole. That'd represent the hole. And then uh, the longest one right there makes breaks it into two parts. That's gonna be a half. And then the next longest marks break it into fourths. So each one's a fourth. And there's four fourths in a hole. And the smallest marks break it into eighths. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight eighths makes one whole inch. Um, so that may make, make it a little bit easier for you to understand because typically number lines are a little bit more difficult than strip diagrams. So for instance, if I had something that uh, fell right there on my number line, that looks like it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that would be uh, seven eighths, or it's uh, seven holes. So seven and seven eighths inches long. Okay, uh, let's look at some uh, guided practice problems here. It says, Sue walks seven eighths of a mile to the playground. Which point on the number line represents the distance Sue walked? So um, important that uh, the seven eighths of a mile is important. And what we're trying to find out is which point on the number line represents the distance Sue walked. 
So let's look at our number line really quick. I have some points marked on there. I have zero eights, one eighth, four eights, six eights, and eight eights. So, and I can see that uh, zero eights represents probably the starting point, and uh, eight eights represents one hole. What does four eights represent on my number line? What's another fraction that's equal to four eights? Yes, that's correct. One half is equal to four eights. And anytime we have a fraction where the numerator is half of the denominator is going to be equivalent to a half. So uh, we'll look at po the points on the number line. Point A. So what does point A represent on my number line? Yeah, that's correct. It's right after one eighth, so that's going to be two eighths. And my number line is broken into eight equal parts. What does uh, point B represent on my number line? Yes, that's correct. It represents three eighths. And I already have four eighths marked on my number line. What does point C represent on my number line? Yes, that's correct. Point C represents five eighths. I already have six eighths marked on my number line. What does point D represent on my number line? Yes, that's correct. Point D represents seven eighths. My next point on my number line is eight eighths. That means uh, I'll double check real quick. I have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. So it looks like it all works out. Uh, well, since when I got to my one hole, I, got, I was eight, at a eight eighths, uh, my improper fraction. So uh, I think I marked my number line correctly. So that means uh, answer choice D, point D is gonna represent seven eighths, which is how far Sue walked uh, uh, to, from, uh, to the playground. Let's go ahead and look at the next problem. Problem number two. And problem number two says the number line below shows the distance from Chase's house uh, to some places near his house. So uh, what we want to know is how far is the school from the library? So I'm going to circle some important information. I'm going to circle the school. I'm going to circle the library. So we want to know what the distance is from the school to the library. Uh, we'll try a uh, couple different ways of doing this. Uh, we go ahead and start, uh, we'll start with uh, Chase's house, and we see Chase's house, and the school is one-fourth of a mile, the park is two-fourths of a mile, the store is three-fourths of a mile, and the library is one mile from his house. And one mile would represent what fraction? Yes, that's correct. One mile would represent four-fourths of a mile, or one whole mile. So if I want to figure out how far it is from Chase's house uh, to... Uh, to the library, and it's already marked on there. I know from Chase's house, the library is four-fourths of a mile. So if I want to represent how far it is from the school to the library, I could go ahead. I know from Chase's house to the library is four-fourths of a mile. Uh, what I could do is subtract the dis distance it is from Chase's house to the school, which is one-fourth of a mile. So if I want to subtract one-fourth from four-fourths, I know when I'm adding, subtracting, and I'm, uh, I'm subtracting fractions that have the same denominator, the denominator is going to stay the same. So my difference is going to have a denominator of four, and all I need to do is do the operation for the numerator, which is four minus one, and four minus one is three. So we can say the distance from the school to the library is four-fourths of a mile because, I mean three-fourths of a mile because from his house is four-fourths. And if I subtracted, subtracted the distance from his house to the school, which is one-fourth of a mile, that told us the distance from the school to the library. Or we could just go ahead and start at the school and see how many sections it is to from the school to the library. It looks like that's one-fourth, two-fourths, three-fourths of a mile, so three-fourths of a mile. So it is three-fourths of a mile from the school to the library. Okay, it says the number line shows the distance each person lives from the park. And you have a number line uh, that shows uh, the park being a point zero on our number line. And then I have some uh, letters, A, B, C, and D on my number line. I also see a one and two on my number line. So uh, the, below the number line says, Frank lives one and three-fourths mile from the park. Which point on the number line represents Frank's house? So uh, important information, 
that's Frank's house is one and three fourths mile from the park. And what I'm trying to find out is which point on the number line represents Frank's house. So um, let's go ahead and look at our number line. Point A. How far from the park is point A? Yeah, uh, it looks like um, the, uh, the, the number line is broken into four equal parts between each hole. So uh, that's going to be two-fourths of a mile away from the park or a half a mile. I'll put a half above it so it could be either two-fourths or a half. What does point D represent on my number line? Yes, D falls right between my half and my one hole. And point D would be three-fourths of a mile from the park. Point C. What does point C represent on my number line? Yep, that's the first tick mark away from one. So point C would represent one and one-fourth mile from the park. What does point B represent on my number line? Point B is one tick mark away from two. And I know it's broken into fourths, so that would be my uh, third fourth, so one and three fourths miles from the park. So um, we're going to go ahead and uh, double check, look at all the rest of the marks on our number line, make sure it all works out. So I know zero uh, would re represent, it's broken into fourths, would represent zero fourths. My first line would be one fourth. I already marked the two fourths, and I marked three fourths, and one hole would be four fourths. So that works out. So uh, my next tick mark away from that would be one and one fourth. Uh, the next one would be one and two fourths. I already marked one and three fourths. And my two mark would be, I guess, one and four fourths. Or I could also say it's, it's also eight fourths if I turn it into an improper fraction. So if I'm looking at my number line, I'm looking for which point represents Frank's house, which is one and three-fourths miles from the park. It looks like point B on my number line represents, represents uh, oh, Fran's house. I keep on saying Frank. Fran's house there. So you should answer B. Okay, it's time to go ahead and do your independent practice. Uh, there'll, be a, there'll be a PDF right below this with the assignment on there that will allow you to print it out and work it out similar to how you would do it in class. Okay, but uh, below that will be a blue puzzle piece with today's date on there, and uh, it'll be the assignment that how you'll submit it to us so uh, we can uh, grade it for you and tell you how you did. So uh, make sure you take your time and do your very best on that. And uh, if you have any questions though, uh, email your teacher or send them a message in Schoology, and we'll get back with you and uh, try to clear up any questions you have or uh, any if any of the uh, assignments don't seem like they're working like they're supposed to, or the videos aren't playing, uh, just send us a message and uh, we'll uh, look into it and uh, try to fix that for you. Uh, best of luck to you and we'll talk to you later.